This conference will now be recorded. Call to order of the work session at 6.30 p.m. on June 6, 2023. 6.30. Any additions or corrections to the agenda? Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda. Thank you, Councilor Wagner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Norman. I'll call the roll. Councilor Wagner? Aye. Councilor Ash? Aye. Councilor Webb? Aye. Councilor Norman? Aye. Mayor votes aye. Discussion, please, Chief Contract. Okay, so I know there was a little, it was difficult what we had to, what the prior police chief contracts contracted us to do. Um, so I, this is the original agreement, just redacted, the one that says employment agreement at the top. So it just has personal information and salaries redacted because they don't, we're not, that doesn't mean anything to us right now. Uh, this one that I agree uh, included for you is what Greg sent from Klotzkanai. Klotzkanai, as we all know, is under the sheriff now, but this was the most recent one that they had done a police chief contract or an employment contract. So the I wanted to discuss with you guys, one, what would you want in an agreement? Two, do you want an agreement? <laughs> So the city of Scappoos, the city of St. Helens, and Columbia City do not have a police chief separate agreement. Those employees are employees like everyone else under the handbook. So that's kind of the first order of operations is, do we think we could attract or keep someone that's already attracted without an agreement? And if you're going the agreement route, what do you want to safeguard or present as your first draft to a potential employee of what isn't in the agreement? Does that make sense? The agreement's got to give some give and take. I believe you all felt like the give and take was too much of a take on the city's behalf, but in all honesty, it, ours was kind of the lesser of what I've seen out there as far as what someone gets if you let them go or so you're saying without a separate chief agreement they would just fall under the regular officer agreement they would just fall under as as employees as all the employees of the city do so they follow the handbook um so and with the handbook I was trying to pull it up but I couldn't it printed half of it for me which was really helpful so, pull up. So, in the state of Oregon, employees are at will. You know, you can just say, I no longer need you. Thank you. Goodbye. So, that's one part of it. Um, let me see. So, in, in the termination clauses in the original, that was written by Jim Johnson. That, that was Jim Johnson. Bill Hackett signed one a year previous, and then the council had got rid of him. So then Jim Johnson was the signature on this, the one I presented you with. Um, and you can see there what they get in termination. Which in this part is the, the give is the bump back down to sergeant. Well, so that's the reason we paid out in this circumstance is we knew that person wasn't, couldn't, we could let them bump back down to sergeant. We'd still be in the same boat. They'd still be unable to perform the duties because of medical. Yeah. So that we were advised, we, we, were, <laughs> we were advised by the insurance company and legal to go the right way because they said you'll end up in a fight the other way. If you bring them back in and then you still do this, then you're in a fight. Josette? Yeah. Um, looking back at the last 11 years or so when this, this was written, mm -hmm. signed, um, 
how did it how did the contract generally work both ways uh, until the last uh, person went on a workman's comp claim and, and it's off work how, how was it working pretty well yeah so they still fall under the handbook they just have extra safeguards in this agreement right so there was nothing in the agreement that made it difficult in the relationship between myself and that person mm -hmm. they were still following all the same rules as an employee i think there's kind of i've sat in your guys' shoes before and when you sit on that side of it you're like no severance no you don't want to give anything but then you ultimately don't attract anything at the same time so um you know we could propose that we amend this one or have reuben amend it and clean it up for regulations um and address whatever your guys' concerns are um, really it's most of them and I know that one time they did use the going back into the sergeant's position, back into the union. Um, he did during the whole officer K tribulation because he felt like, hey, nothing's safe here, and took that opportunity to go back under the union so that the should the city have just wiped the slate clean, he would have been protected. The union wouldn't have left the city at the time just kind of disband the police department and do something different. So I think while it's kind of not a good thing for us that someone can step back into the sergeant's position, I don't know that if you're offering an employment agreement without that right to go back into the union, um, they feel pretty exposed and they might not even sign an agreement. I'm not talking about any person, I'm talking sure. about when you say we open it up to the public and we get someone that wants to be cheap um, and don't internally post first, then I think they'd be really suspect of an agreement that wouldn't let them get back in the union. It's really up to you guys with which way you want to go and then we'll go that way. There might be a reason they would choose to go back into the union, not for something like a Officer K issue. I mean, they're another person shows up and they go that guy would be real or girl would be really better at this and i'm happy being a sergeant or an officer whatever yeah i mean that i i like having that in there with that option for them to be able to do it just it does just confuse things a little bit like it did with us where someone's having a medical issue yeah you let them go back in the sergeant's position then you're still kind of holding on to this person yeah. that can't perform so, so you could add language, maybe strength in language. Should this employee be unable, or yeah. if that's language, yeah. Ruben could draft some. Yeah, I agree that that would be. If if Ruben has something he can add to protect us in that way, it would be really helpful. But I don't have a problem with it being in there. That aside, okay. I also and I obviously I don't think anyone. I expect that. No one's here to say we want no severance. There just was kind of like the amount that was able to be accrued that had to be paid out was really exorbitant. So well, I think that's in your employee handbook. It is. So that's where. So that's the tricky part. Yeah. Is with a staff, and this has happened in I think almost every department, maybe not library, uh, with a staff this small and the amount of work to do. <laughs> The department heads rarely can take all the vacation they accrue and keep things rolling. So you end up either, which we have, we've done, I think, two times in the history that I remember, we paid out vacation because we knew that person was going to lose 80 hours. There was no way we were able to let them take it. Mm -hmm. And that's not really legit, right? right? To just be like, oh, too bad. You're, I mean, so that's kind of one of the issues with if we were going to try and lower that mm -hmm. rollover because like me and chief at the time and jeff although we've been better on getting jeff to take it um because he now he has a full crew um 
there's some years you just can't even possibly take it all. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to take one Friday every, right? More than that. That's not realistic, really. Yeah, I, right. Depending on your years of service, the handbook, you accrue a lot more hours. So, yeah, I mean, as right, you're here. Right now, I'm going to be at 32 and a half days of vacation a year. Yeah. Work days. I don't know how you do that. Yeah. That's. <laughs> well, that's a lot. Well, we have <laughs> two full months. Stay home. It's, it's a month and a half of <laughs> time. Anything. You just can't. Yeah. And you have work to do. <laughs> that's, the, that's the crux, yeah. right? It's you're like, mm, do I just go sit at home and take this vacation day when I know all these things need doing? You don't. No, you don't. If you're a good employee, you don't. It's hard to force yourself to stay home. So the other thing that I um, noticed in this one. So the termination section on page seven is really, um, well, it's nothing like mine. Where mine lays out, if we terminate you with cause, this is what happens. If we terminate you without cause, like for no reason, bye-bye, we don't want you here anymore, this is what happens. And only in that second one are you required to actually pay the severance, right? Uh, they could still go back into the, step back into the sergeant should the sergeants i think you beef up the language about sergeant one if you were medically unable to do the job you can't pull that and two i just lost well this says you can't go back to sergeant if you're because if you're being demoted like for cause well no i know that oh the other one was you couldn't go back to sergeant if the sergeant position is already filled that would be the other thing. Mm -hmm. Then what do you do when you got two sergeants? Yeah. And we only have one in our current. So you could beef it up like that and beef up the kind of scenarios. If it's, you know, expand on the, you can't go back to sergeant if it's with cause, but what happens if it's not with for cause? Right. So, so, add, that, so add to the last bit of that, unless termination is for cause, add to that, you mean, Josette? Well, no, because it says, um, unless terminate, second paragraph, the last line, it says you can yeah. have the right, unless terminated for cause. I would add the, I would clean it up and do headings where it says, you know, you can go back into the sergeant's position, termination for cause, termination with no cause, without cause, and do three paragraphs that really clearly outline it. Could add to it then. Yeah. And add in that medical cause. Yeah. Yeah, that's a sergeant. For yeah, that's that's going to be um, interesting because of ADA, and I'm sure Ruben will do it properly. I mean, that's just something that's really we'll just have to. Well, I think you just say because they have to hit. I mean, all of us. You think it's even in the employment handbook? If you cannot perform the duties right, then there's steps that we have to take. Right. So if we have to draw some of that in there to safeguard that, if you're unable to perform the duties, then the policy in the handbook regarding this and how we will try and make accommodations because we've had that where people have had, you know, periods in their lives medically where they're unable to lift the 50 pounds, right, from injury or right. something, and then once they're better, so you just make accommodations. Yeah, but there's a limit. So they're, well, and especially, they can go on for years. Especially, well, that's the thing, though. We, in the state of Oregon, it can go on for years really? without us being able to not. Sectors that way. No, it's not. Public is a whole different collection well, of the mill. I mean, you had, there was a certain expectation that, you would be released by your doctor within a certain amount of time. And, and yeah. if you weren't able, they wouldn't hold the job for you. Right. Yeah. And so he, with being public, There's you're following under FEMLA, OFLA, all of the requirements where you can't really, I mean, we can't even ask. Yeah. You know, other than it's, if it's workman's comp, we get to know what the injury is, but we should someone get injured on their side and they need to go out on leave we don't really get any information other than here's their job description and the duty list and then the doctor checks what they can or can't do and time timing periods and then we have to send another letter please 
let us know or have your doctor fill out this updated form and it's like that's just so legally what you're kind of stuck it, it, can is there anything a second or okay i'm sorry so if they can't fully perform their job, but they can do administrative duties, but administrative duties aren't full-time work. Do, do we do any part-time? I haven't, can you see, I haven't seen that, to... especially because they're employed as a full-time. So um, most of the time they'd be like, they could do part-time and then if they had like supplemental insurance or if they had d disability coverage under AFLAC or something like that, that supplements you get kind of, it's scenario by scenario, right? Depending on exactly what their uh, availability is. I was so. just wondering if Ruben could carve something in there that since your job duties are restricted if you if they go on this medical thing because mm -hmm. there's another thing i want to talk about is you know i i can't tell you what how many hours administratively they need to be in that office but i it, my impression was that got abused at the end with the with our last chief mm -hmm. that that's basically where he stayed and we lost. I, I don't believe that it is a full-time job being the police chief in there. It, 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 you know, I think it should be like a 50-50 split. Yeah, I think just depending but, on reports that are generated and stuff, I think it will flux all year long. <clears throat> I don't know of um, a way to actually outline that in an agreement because it will some days is some months it's probably 70 percent 30 right and some months it flips if you have a whole bunch of cases and vandalism and reporting and all of that stuff i mean the amount of uploading they have to do to this the sieges and all the all the stuff is like annoying to me i wouldn't be able to do it but I don't know how you'd write that in. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to interrupt you and then sister, but I think you're right. I mean, yeah. But so, I what do you want? Best case scenario of what you want would want it to say. What? Do you, just spill it for me, because I maybe am not understanding. Well, the, the expectation is the chief is a working chief. It's a working position. Patrol presence on the street is a job required yeah sitting in the office all day is not fulfilling that duty well what happens with the work that they have to do is sitting in the office all day it's a lot of work well but what's he been doing now i mean is, is the work not being done no the work's still being done because he's been out on the streets well yeah i guess that's the thing i guess uh, I don't know how I don't I don't know what you know that you're feeling that way I didn't feel that way about the past chief like because you didn't see the car out or does that make sense like what what's making the yeah public? I just I just I very ever so seldom see Chief Connor on the street there probably the last well that last year was but what do you mean on the street? Like the car out in public? Out in public, patrolling, uh, you know, yeah. serving that function of a police officer presence on the street. And, um, I think, may I? May I? Yes, yeah, absolutely. I think that in the job description, mm -hmm. it just defines that the expectation is that it's a working chief of police when able and you know depending on what the duties are that would keep him desk bound or her desk bound i think that that's the only way you can do it because you cannot mandate you will spend 48 percent of your time on the street because that's just not within the purview of of i think 
whether it's the city administrators, the boss, or the council <laughs> the boss. Um, I think it's just the expectation, like you said, you're a working chief, but we also have to give them latitude to be able to manage their own job. You know, well, and they really are a department head, so you don't see me out on the street. I mean, you do sometimes, but the same kind of thing. They have to do evaluations, employment, all the things. It's a very small department. But that doesn't mean the amount of work generated by those officers or the report, because they have to review the reports of their officers and send those in. So there's there's a lot of like paperwork stuff. I think we don't attribute to police work. We attribute police work to boots on the ground, arrests made, calls answered. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I you're understand. kind of paperwork side, I think you're discounting that a little bit when it's the federal requirement. That's what everyone else cares about. I just, we care about seeing them out and about, but what all the other agencies and state police and all those people care about is how you're tracking and managing the records of these interactions with criminals or trespass. Does that make sense? So I don't know how you would uh, satisfy kind of your concern other than being really you know we expect to see the chief of police engaging with the public and you know whatever whatever the things are you want putting that on paper i think you'd have to do that if because it'd be a bummer to not put it on paper and then they get in trouble mm -hmm. for not knowing that's your expectation or right you you don't like what they're doing but they didn't have written kind of understanding of it. You know, Zach, yeah. Um, kind of along the lines of Dale's thinking as far as duties and, and whenever I think of an injury in, in my past with him, my employer, uh, and this may or may not be warranted with the profession uh, serving as a police officer. You may have to have. 100% of your faculties and, and physical abilities, but the light duty end of it, um, is there anything that possibly a chief out of the union could perform light duties um, if he's on a uh, workman's comp? Um, yeah, so then they could do they could get it, tasks. Yeah. Right, but that's also kind of the bummer is if they're here in the office and a call comes in yeah. and they're stuck doing administrative tasks, we would say, you can't go. Yeah. That's what we as the city would say, right? Because they'd be hindered somehow. They would want to go. Yeah. And so it's like kind of police is weird, different. Yeah. You know, the rest of us, if I don't, if I'm not available, that's fine. And Stephanie, Cassandra, they can say, they can deal with someone, they can take a message, they can make a decision, and then we discuss it later. If they have to make a decision on the spot about something, they know they're, yeah. I trust them to do that. But uh, in a way, police is just different. Yes. Yeah. It was just a kind of a long it's shot really thing. That when we had two out, right, in that department, um, that was a huge burden because we couldn't, we're still having to pay those people. We're still having to net, do all the paperwork. And then we have this, the other ones getting kind of burnt out being the only one. So yeah. this is just a weird, it's a weird department for this kind of stuff. This is just based on the scenario. Go ahead. No, 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 you're first. I already talked. I think what Dell's kind of seeing is with Carnahan, he's out there, he's seeing him more. It's more what he expected our other chief to be doing. Mm -hmm. And he would like the next person to be the same way. Yeah. And I would too. So I think we just get that in the expectations in the job description up front. In this agreement, if you choose to go with an employment agreement, really spell it out under the duties section. I think it's yeah, the expectation that it's a working position. Yeah. Because if they do 
retract in there and just hibernate. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if you could use that as cause, but I would, it's not acceptable though for us to just basically lose that police presence on the street. Yeah, I think you know, I think and paying the top dollar for that position to just be nothing but an administrator. It, we're just too small a department to yeah. to absorb that. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, just think of right now when the situation if we were to have a chief put in there. But for the most part, Dale, could, that's the tricky part is all of them are coming from a place when they come to get employed. A chief is the administrative job. That is the administrative position. Like they're tasked with know. all of it. it Time sheets, now, evaluations, was report. Before. <laughs> well, no, I think, but I think anyone we get to say we post it, right? When we had Frank Grace, he wasn't out on the street, right? We. Most of the chiefs we've had weren't out on the street. So I think that might also just be a description understanding from that profession too, that that's administrative. Most police chiefs aren't, you know, I think if they just went out the back door, the gates when the wind sucks. Well, we could probably add that verbiage in the contract in the handbook. Yeah, I think, you know, you could put something like we're wanting it to be a working chief yeah. who's engaging regularly with the community that's you know as much participating as in patrols when available like and so then if we saw none happening we'd say okay you're not available show me why that is why you are not right now well, the last year a sergeant has been sitting up there at the school in the church parking lot every morning. Yeah. Mm, about once a month. Oh. Well, and when our, our well, maybe lately, but that was up kind there of a lot. our concerns was we are so remote. So we made that executive decision yeah. to have him work the hours of school so that we always had presence until we're fully. Yeah. Because it just that's the most important thing. You know, if petty thefts are happening it the little gap when we don't have coverage, okay. Most of us have have ring cams or protecting ourselves or whatever. Um, the one thing, Dale, all of you, and I know you understand paperwork load. It doesn't really matter how big or small your organization or your department is. There's a, as Josette's kind of alluded to, there is a level of paperwork that's required that is ridiculous. I mean, a file, and, and I know particularly with police work, anytime there's something that's a crime, if they don't do it exactly right, that means that person potentially can not be held liable for whatever crimes they committed. So it's not just about Oh look, we took a report. And, you know, I wish it was like the old whichever days, right? The, the old shows where it's like, oh yeah, here's my report, and you know, just passing it in. But it's not. I mean, the level of any scrutiny on all of that stuff is outrageous, and the amount of time I spend doing paperwork is it's mind-boggling and it's numbing. And they and go. To sure they'd rather be out on the street than sitting. Well, some of them anyway. Well, it's hilarious. So we were driving the Hill Highway and we got across from Elm and Jasper was a little kid in his booster seat and he goes, I just saw a car in the river. I saw a car in the river. And we're like, okay, buddy. We turn around and there's a freaking car down the river. So we come to the police department and we tell Sean. And she, Sean's like, thanks for the paperwork, Eagle Eyes, to Jasper <laughs> because he's got to now pull it out, investigate it, look for stuff, write all of that up over a car someone was driving drunk, went in the embankment, jumped out I of like the car. It. Well, there, were, there was alcohol in the car, open bottles. They bailed. Now we have this report about a random car, right? Yeah. So that's the kind of thing where 
And then the chief's really supposed to take in those reports, make sure all the T's are crossed, yeah. you know, I's are dotted, and then submit it to the bigger thing. So there is yeah. maybe in this last instance, he he I what I honestly believe is he was dealing with the medical thing way before he informed us of it. And so I think he was coming every day trying to do the job but really suffering from it and trying to like ignore, right? And so then that has you kind of hold up and you're trying to be there present and do the stuff you know you need to do, but you're not as physically. And I think that was him safeguarding himself in the city from having to pursue somebody, right? He should have been more forthright and said, I'm hurting, but having to pursue somebody without being able or knowing in the back of your mind, I'm not 100%, yeah. and I'm gonna risk me and potentially the city or whoever I'm dealing with if I go for it, but, but I'm, yeah. So we wanted to say, well, first of all, the job description definitely needs to say our expectations. So, and we're just coming to consensus. I'm gonna bring you guys back first. So, you know, and I can listen to the tape too, but we want, it's a working working chief position. We want engagement, regular engagement with the citizens and via, via patrol, yeah. right? Via patrol. You can spout off anything to me and I'm writing it down. <laughs> so is the employment agreement where there's the potential for adding the residents. It is. Uh, <laughs> Plus, can I have been there? Yeah, great. The one Greg's in this. Uh, I don't know. Requirement or for no, the, the just extra pay? Say, yeah, just a, a bump in pay if you live locally. Yeah, I mean, and that's it, but that's in this that's it in the CDA, so we'd have to put it in here if you want it in there. It's only currently offered to people in the union under oh, the CBA. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. so when they come out of the union, but the cost of, they don't pay. That's why if if you didn't have a contract, you couldn't offer that to them because you don't offer it to any of the employees under me. Right. right, they're the same as that yeah. without an employment agreement. Right. So is that something you guys want to? It was just a well, the amount of money that we would save because they weren't taking the vehicle out of town would oh, probably, wow. yeah, cover potentially it. depending on which step they. Because five percent bump if they're a step six or higher up step, that's a chunk. Five percent of that's a chunk of change. You know, just every year as they because they yeah. go up the same steps as if they were in the union based on where they came in that's the stuff how you regulate their pay right. and that's what the agreement had stated for compensation but and that's presuming we go with the employment agreement and ha not have them be a employee of the city yeah okay. well this does specify they have to be they have to maintain residency within five miles. Well, that's oh, class yeah. Yeah. That's obviously too close for us, but. Yeah, I think our CBA said they have to be able to report to their duty station within so many minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's right. Just to prevent the previous. The bummer part of that is someone's driving <laughs> where they can get in 20 minutes. You don't want them. So that was in our previous agreement? I think it's in the CBA, the collective bargaining agreement. Okay. But so that wasn't, we don't think, in the previous, because obviously he was allowed. Well, this to is the previous agreement. Very far. Oh, this so the right. chief. That's yeah. right. I was looking at class. I just redacted the personal stuff. I about this one. Okay. So they abide by all the things because they're not in the union in the employee handbook. That's why. If you were going to offer them what's offered to regular patrol, meaning the 5% for living in the remote environment, it would have to be in here because right now all this says is they're the same as all the employees underneath. Yeah. 
which don't get offered in the same. So, and I think there's a lot of good stuff in here. Like, in a, I think that's one of them, but I also think there are limits to the payouts for resignations and terminations. Um, well, that's in class semis. I know. Yeah, so if you, you want to... I like it. Put a section. It says that... Um, uh like severance wouldn't exceed 200 hours um vacation time will not exceed 200 hours these are payouts um, so ours would be the 260 because it would match the handbook right okay yeah and um, then um sick time was not paid out no it's never paid out okay it's just reported to PERS. and it was vacation that got us this time right yeah Okay, and so that was limited to 260? Yeah. Okay. And it was still yeah. it was a chunk of change. Yeah. Yep. Um, Class the, limited to 200. Yeah. Yeah, the, that, well, and that's in whatever year. Oh, that's well, two. Yeah. Oh. That's 21 years ago. Right. Yeah. Um, and then the while I appreciate the severance or or the not to exceed the 200 hours or um oh, two months the risk is months. well no the risk of doing something different than the handbook is that if if we had to fight it then they're probably fight it and then you're spending money on attorneys like that's you want to have it be an agreement that gets you what you want mm -hmm. doesn't totally write off the person applying but then leaves you very few spots where well, legally you're stuck So maybe fighting. it's not a discussion for this agreement. Maybe it's a discussion for the handbook, but. The handbook, I'm lowering it. I'm lowering it well, to 200. Because is it limited right now? To 260. Okay. Or whatever. It's, I think it's, or it used to be 260. It's 280 because that's so many weeks mm -hmm. of time or something. It's in there. What does it say? Read, let me find it. That is it. that for both. That's very generous. Either number. And is that? What are you exactly? One, not one sixty. Carryover of one sixty. And what is that in? So that's four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. No, four eight twelve. Yeah, four eight twelve. Yeah. I can add. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm like, what? And it, 100, 100 is it limited in the handbook both for severance and vacation payout? There's no severance in the There's handbook because no they're out well. Okay. If we let you go, the only thing you can do is grieve. If I let you go, you can grieve it to you guys. Mm -hmm. And if you guys uphold the decision, then the only thing they can do is try and sue us. Mm -hmm. But most of the time. Right. When we've had to let them go, we've had the evidence to let them go, right? I mean, we they weren't going to yeah. sue us for. Let me see. Yeah, I, I don't think 160 hours is unreasonable, but in this case, I think it is um, more appropriate to be the 200 or something. To be what? 1500. What'd you just say? 200 or 200. Oh, 200 or whatever. Higher. It is. It's in the higher amount. Yeah, I like My dad had something like that when he retired. Right. Okay, no so yeah, it's not hours. more than two hours. <laughs> no severance. How much? Not more than 280 hours can accrue. But the reason I think that is, is if you've worked here for 15 years or more, you're getting 200 hours a year. Yeah. I mean, it starts with 80, so 10 days of vacation. That's for the first through year one to year four. Year five to seven is 15 days of vacation. Years eight through 14 is 20 days or 160 hours. And years 15 or more is 25 days. What's 10 days of vacation? In the class that I have the 200 hours, they top out at 17 years, I believe. And say that again, Rick. Um, I 
I thought I saw 17, range 17. I, I'm assuming that's a year. Years, 17 years of service. Yeah. 261 starting. Yeah, we talk about it, 261. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, the 5% step increase. Uh, 28. Annually. Yeah. It tops oh, out at 17 years, I think. Or step seven, section 17 or something. Oh, actually, there's Is one more. Is it related to their steps in there? Oh, range 17. Yes. There's an additional Which so I think is year. something related to years, Rick. Okay. Exactly year for year, but that's <laughs> yeah. They could just pay me for a week of um, <laughs> we could a long we could have two vacations or we could have carried more than two weeks. It's a time off. Paid. At the mill. Yeah. Yeah. It's been an interesting cat has just revised theirs to be more competitive with the real world. Um, 15 years, it, we had to go 10 years between year five and year 15 before we got an increase in our um, monthly mm -hmm. uh, uh, personal leave hours. Still, I cannot complain. CAT has some pretty good benefits for a nonprofit, particularly, but I, as it applies to this, I think that, sorry, it, I think this is appropriate. I still, is there a benefit to, or is there a drawback to having them have an employment contract with the city versus not being a, being a city employee versus being a contracted? In the bargaining unit, you mean? No, no. Okay. Is there a benefit? Yeah. I mean, most of the city. Because um, you're saying that. No, there's that, not a benefit okay. for the for the contract conversion. That's a benefit to them. Safety net. Right. Right. Feeling like I have something. I'm not just coming in willy nilly. Right. right. Um, yeah. So basically what would happen is the terms that are currently in the employment agreement would be rolled into the handbook as a section no. of any of anything we wanted specifically to be addressed that that would be of benefit to the new chief and ex mm -mm. it would just be another agreement like this okay yeah you can pull things you want that aren't they're going to have to abide by this handbook anyway, right? So the only thing is if you wanted the 5% incentive, that would have to go in there because it only exists in the CBA, which they're not a part of. God, if, that make, if I'm making yeah. sense. Um, so one of the things I just read, I guess <laughs> misunderstood, um, Trying to read this termination section here. In our still is that? Yeah, oh, in the handbook here. Uh, oh, so handbook, not in this. It's interesting what happens when you actually read, reread your old guidelines and program guidelines and employee me ham, handbooks and so. Stuff. One of the things I have to ask Ruben because the way this sentence reads, let me read it to you. Let me find it again. 11. So this concerns me now that I'm reading it separate from everything and just reading it on its own. So it said, um, upon separation from the city, employees will be paid for any accrued but unused vacation. Vacation must schedule a supervisor, time off granted, but it doesn't say if you're fired for cause that you shouldn't you don't get it, so it I may think say that you have to give it up. Yeah, and class of nine, yeah, with cause still paid out. Correct, the it vacation. Is just the vacation. It is, yes, it it's just her, her, it's her. Her. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so that's fine. The pawn separates. So, yeah. so, what's caused this angst when this happens is it impacts our budget. Mm -hmm. to do the, these things and 
is there a way fiscally for, I mean, if somebody earns a vacation, shouldn't we have that money sitting there to pay that? Yeah, and yeah. so just because we didn't pay it out, it should be sitting somewhere. So when, if they pull the pin and we have to pay it, we can go, yeah, we got it. It doesn't impact our budget. I mean, that's kind of caught us in the past. I think we haven't had the money there. Well, and, and we're using our. By that same token, we've never set aside the severance required. Yeah. When, in my agreement and this agreement, yeah. when Bill was here and we had to pay out, his was six months of severance. Yeah. We did not have, for six months, we could not afford to hire anyone. And it's almost like the money had to be paid. Reserve somewhere to be able to pay this out when it happens because that really <laughs> constricts our ability to you know well we can't hire anybody because yeah. we don't have any money in the budget right to mm -hmm. you know so we limp right for a year i thought that was i agree with that I'm not for cities no really interesting because i was thinking maybe instead of like being able to accrue so much maybe you hit either a timeline for how old those hours are that you just have to pay them out just on an annual basis. So you're paying it in chunks instead of waiting, 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 bam. But since it's only, I'm gonna say this, only 280, right? And that's a that's a finite number. It's not like- Yeah, but it's not- They're small. getting 1,500, no. We haven't been able I mean, we weren't able to hire a chief or another officer because of this. Yeah, but I think- The other thing is it is impeding us when we have to pay it from replacing that person. So there's gonna be a gap and that's concerning. Yeah, so I think that'd be a budgetary starting something and figuring out <laughs> how we start paying into it. But don't we figure when we figure their police budget, we look at the potential for them taking all their vacation in that year. But if they're taking the vacation, then they're getting paid for it, then they're not also working and getting paid for it. Yeah. See what I mean? So the yeah, yeah. Available, we're, not, we're yeah. not going your 20, 80 hours so, plus 15 days in the budget. Yeah. Yeah. We're not doing that currently. We. It's not a bad idea to do it, but then I don't know. I mean, it's each exactly budget bookkeeping is a problem. Well, and it's hypothetical know. because if someone is taking that time, then you're not going to pay it twice. Yeah. Right? Uh, so yeah. it's only it's not something you're going to be able to perfectly predict. Right? What, what we're really doing is is where people are working when they should have been on vacation. We would have been paying them that vacation pay. Right, they're yeah, like yeah. with the police. Budgetarily, yeah. we're really not anticipating that. Right, that and if you had they're working fully, when we've right, and yeah. so yeah. yeah, and if you had a fully staffed police department, then vacations aren't a problem necessarily. Yeah. Right, that's the other thing. You get down to two guys, they're working every shift. Sorry, yeah. no one's getting vacation. Yeah, and that's, that's why times we've had to pay it out because we're like, hey. What I so I only get three days, but at the end of the year, well, because you get a lot of other days, they're just not paid. But at the end of the year, if you don't take them, they are paid out. Okay. Roll those over. You roll over your sick time, but you don't roll over any personal days because clearly they are planning to pay that, right? Because uh, well, and also because if I'm out sick, they're paying a sub. You don't and we, but, we huh. could we do that? But we'd have to budget for that. You'd have to budget for it. Not going to be taken, but they would keep you more current instead of waiting until. Yeah, then I mean, so you're paying it as you go, or you build the reserve that you're holding it in to pay it out. Right. Mm -hmm. And like to the seventh point, that yeah, you I don't need know. to have a little cushion there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I think preparing for severance and vacation you can't allow someone to take is a smart idea in the budget. Mm -hmm. The concern about, I have about changing the handbook or lessening the hours, then really the longevity benefit of being here is nothing right. because you get nothing more than someone that started yesterday. Yeah. 
and that's not going to make for good no. yeah, vibes if you start and i think we only have well i'd have to look but i think that only one is currently in that and the rest of us are in the lesser ones the two the eight to 14 is where sean and i are i believe Oh yeah, I guess that's nice. we need to put a placeholder for <laughs> thinking about the budget next year, incorporating something in there. Yeah. Well, and I think it'd just be in salaries, and then it would be in the chart of accounts as you know, uh, it's an earned vacation. It's a line item. Yeah. No. It's also severance. But I'm talking about for severance for the for the bush bulk of them say someone leaves us tomorrow we're having to pay that so we should be planning for kind of mm -hmm. collecting at least what exists on the books in hours yeah uh, yeah, really? yeah. 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 yeah okay yeah. yeah so that's what i'm saying so yeah. and then every year whatever can be accrued should be in salaries mm -hmm. you know covering it okay but there is a maximum it's going to ever get well a technical maximum because you've got 280 hours times whatever the rate is maximum <laughs> yeah per Except employee per employee right 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 because right. we had talked about this probably maybe it was the first time you were on or maybe it was with donna but we had talked about going to pto way back yeah um but crazy. then the money number was shocking <laughs> the amount of money we need to Hold oh, to go that it's right. a lot well i think realistically i mean because i i assume staff a lot of the staff are able to take their mm -hmm. their vacations yes so i mean i probably have angie take a realistic look at what is actually occurring and try to model around that yeah and i think where you where the heaviest balances have historically been held except maybe way back with a couple of public works guys but i knew they were collecting it for knee replacement or something right for downtime yeah. to still be taking in funds um it's usually the department heads yeah well usually it's city police public works library you've always been able to make that work so those are typically your ones that are carrying the heaviest balance <laughs> So is there anything else we need to so, add to the well the wish list? Yeah, the agreement you want it, we want to let me just go over what I have for you guys. So we're gonna put in the job description and in the agreement, this is a working position under duties, a regular engagement with the citizens via patrol when a bit when what do I want to say? Time laws. Yeah. Okay. Um do you want to put in the 5% incentive into this agreement just collectively with them? I don't know. Right. Okay. This, I, I'm going to say something that's not allowed. I don't know how long Sean is planning on sticking around if Sean will speak on the chief of police. Yeah. But if you have a new chief of police yeah, and they start soon or, or what, at whatever point, they're going to start at the lower end of that. It depends on if they're a lateral, they're going to come in at whatever step they come in at. Never mind then, that does not. That's why we were doing it more for patrol under the CBA because that's the positions we typically lack is the, the step one, step two, step three patrolmen. I think there is a value of having somebody close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I, I knew that value back when I was a reserve, having the yeah. reserves and a pen phone call away of having a body show up exactly. versus 20 right. to 30 minutes to get here on a good one well, it's twofold it's a value to us and it also is impactful on them yes living here and dealing with that in their all right. their hours that they aren't technically working so well it's well, an incentive well, and it's also uh, a conversation if you are. Right. And he, 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 he had reasons for moving. So that's what I'm saying. In the, on one side, it's an incentive. On the other side, it's a 
not quite, but almost a compensation. And I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, people right? are gonna come interrupt your dinner. Or yeah. Yeah. Because I'm gonna call you when the only breaker one. pops is <laughs> Yeah, I love so, like so the no. incentive, even though it may cost us a fair amount of money. Okay. But that's just but but to your point though, there is a cost to taking that vehicle very yeah. far out. I mean, yeah, it's gonna kind to of to me it's right. close to four grand a year to drive back and forth to the mill. Yeah. And for them it'd be even, even more because they're working five days a week. Oh so, yeah. Okay. Or well, depending on their shift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was only working, well, technically supposed to only be working four, but usually it's like six. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, with gas, particularly, that we're putting yeah, this down. Yeah. And the new yeah. vehicle is not extremely... Well, and the wear and tear, I mean, we're just talking gas, not the wear and tear on the equipment. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They probably could double it. That's why it's now 68 cents or 68 and a half cents, the government yeah, I think says I think the yeah. it's a mile's work. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure that incorporates the actual cost of gas. So I was just reading this again and thinking, what really hit us was PERS allows you to collect up to 2,000 hours of sick time. And if someone has a medical, major medical thing, yeah. they could basically you would pay them for nearly a year two weeks short of a year so they have never used that sick time look i mean currently just in reviewing it every time i sign checks in the, that report we don't have anyone that's got that collective but you get to the 10 plus years and if there's someone that's been relatively healthy they have a chunk of hours in that sick time while we don't have to pay it out should they have a medical thing we can't not let them take it all right over yeah. so that's also a thing that we can't it's just part of doing business but no there was something though we were talking about Ruben looking at throwing around the medical right yeah the uh, just adding medical guidelines for um termination or that they have to be able to perform perform their duties they have to be able to do their duties right but the, for, in the termination right. yeah yeah section yeah and the sergeant. Yeah. It's a motion. Yeah. Right. Unless it's already filled. It can't go back into that. Okay. Need allergies. Mine too. Go over the top. Okay. And so we wanted kind of more akin to how mine separates if it's for cause without cause. Yeah. More details. The 5% incentive is there's consensus for that. If you go back into the union sergeant, it can't be with a medical issue. It can't be. It has to be for security of your job placement, not because, you know, if you're, I think, what did we call it? A medical separation. If this is a right. medical separation, that can't be used or something right. like that. Because you know? if you can't medically be the chief, you can't be the right. sergeant. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. More so. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know. I mean, there's a little bit about, a little bit honest about, I mean, you medically can't do your job, I I. even like at the mill. And when it's it came to time. that time, if you medically couldn't perform your duties, they didn't have to hold you up for it. I mean, you know, and then, yeah. of course, you're working under the federal rules. Um, yeah. And that's like, you mean, they, they offered FEMLA, but then if you ran out of FEMLA the 12 weeks, yeah. you could be let go. Yeah, okay. they didn't have to hold your position after that. They have the option to, but yeah. they didn't have to. Yeah. Um, I think weirdly... You're probably different. Well, I, I think weirdly people, maybe the private industry just, people aren't going to sue because like, but for the public, I feel like every chance somebody gets for being slighted, they think the city has deep pockets or something, you know, but I think that's just kind of a problem of doing business somewhat is that, you know, people will kind of be like, nope, I get to do this or I, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like I said, it kind of comes back to being kind of honest about the situation though. I mean, if I can't do the work that is required of me to do it, I how can I hold you hostage right. for my job? I don't. 
But maybe the courts do that differently. It makes sense, but if you suddenly are the person in that position and you don't have a career path anymore, but does that? I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it's justified. I'm just saying I. I could see how someone in that position would be like, "Oh no, I need to get what I can to protect myself, my family." And sometimes it's generational. Yeah. Just saying. But I, when I could work because of my back, I still worked. Had part time the temporary disability and part time. Yeah. You know, I was working as much as I could, even though I shouldn't have been. But it, it's it's that investment that, that some people have, some generations have more than other generations. And I'm sorry to say that, but it's, oh God, I'm sounding old. <laughs> I'm one of those people now. But, um, or, and, and just people, there are people mm -hmm. who are and people who aren't. And, and you're right. I mean, it'd be great if everybody was just mm -hmm. uh, as much as, you know, they could be honest about it and, oh, well, this has happened. I did something dumb and now I'm injured and now I can't do my job. So I'm just going to leave. But I also see your point of, oh my goodness, I was injured. <laughs> I can't do my job. What am I going to do? How do I get money? Mm -hmm. So, yeah it's all of the above so sorry do you guys want me to run down what i have that we're going to amend yep. in here so that we're putting in the job description and this agreement that the position we're offering is for a working chief regularly engaged engagement with citizen regular engagement with citizens be a patrol if time allows for the termination section we're going to beef it up and put the out with cause without cause in that section of the stepping back at same termination section, stepping back into sergeant, um, we need some outlay, some expectations that that's not allowed if it's for medical reasons, um, that you can't perform your duties. Or if it's the expectations are part, if you're medically unable to perform your duties, that you would come in and do administrative duties part time versus whatever medical restrictions are in place. Um, what else? Anything else? Um, about if the sergeant position is already filled. Oh, okay. Already filled. And, and then the 5%. Five percent. Five percent. Yeah. Okay. So I can so have... Go ahead. I think in the private sector, so on, um, I don't know if you can do this in public, on the medical thing, a lot of times they'll refer you to a doctor, uh, another doctor, to get the opinion. Second, yeah, we have we have that we have that. that in, in our That's in the CBA. I can pull that out because we can ask them to go be reviewed by. Because then yeah. we kind of run into that that we couldn't really. Well, you can it. ask questions. You can ask them to but go for a medical review, review and then do yeah. whether they can perform their job. Yeah. They have to be able to perform their yeah, job. Yeah. yeah. And you could get, you know, unfortunately, nowadays you could get a doctor to probably sign anything for somebody if you had the right or yeah. wrong doctor. Seems like, yeah. Right. But, but yeah, a doctor CBA are choosing. Yeah. We'll just pull that out of the CBA. That okay. with medical review that we we can insist on that should we think something's up. Yeah, is what it says, but not that way. I mean, we're all dancing around that issue because of, yeah, kind of, it did burn us. And yeah. you, um, you can't you can't demand they see a doctor of the city's choosing except for the evaluation they can go to any doctor they want yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you can for say we're requiring the medical evaluation yeah for this section yeah. of the clause and yeah. here you go take these papers or we'll email the papers or yeah oh, we don't run into that ever no we don't be nice well yeah and i think for you know especially in that department you're gonna if it's if it's workman's comp we're on the hook Right. If something happens yeah. on the job, we're just paying it. Yeah. That's the risk we take with having, having an employee. Yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. 
So that kind of thing, should it be not a workman's comp claim, we, you know, right. can push a little bit harder. Okay. So then we'll just, I'll follow up with you guys once Ruben gets a new version. Cool. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything <laughs> else? Can you turn down the thing a little bit? <laughs> I know, two, day, two days, I can't complain. <laughs> oh my God, that's wonderful. <laughs> Don't complain. <laughs> Just thank you. It's not Ready to do adjourn? Yes. I'll adjourn this uh, work session at 7.35 p.m. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. I am just thankful that.